So in the first half, these are the topics that we will be covering. First of all, we will see how to display objects on our screen and then we will explore some of the properties of these objects. Then we will move to the transition library in Krona. The transition library uh, teaches us how to move things around on our screen. Once we have done that, we will move towards topic 3 which will be interactivity and event detection. Uh, how to interact with the objects on our screen and how do we detect different events going on. The fourth topic is about physics. As you may already know, every game uses uh, certain physics concepts like velocity, movement, uh, distance, displacement, collisions. So in this topic, we will be studying how to use physics in our games. After that, there's a, a short topic on different mathematical functions. Uh, at different times, we cover different patterns of movement. Maybe we want to move according to a sine curve, according to a cosine curve. Uh, maybe you want to use absolute functions. So, for that we will be studying a topic related to mathematics. After that we will see how to create and play audios in our games. Audio could be a background music, it could be different sound effects in your game, it could be narrations or it could be voiceover effects. And the last topic will be the composer library. In Krona, the composer library use, is used for scene management. One game has multiple scenes, multiple levels. So we will see how to use the composer library in Krona. So moving forward, <coughs> for this course, for the first half of the course, you will be needing Krona SDK. You can download it from coronalabs.com. Uh, secondly, you will be needing a text editor. The text editor which is compatible with Krona is Sublime. Uh, I've shared the links, you can see them on the screen. And the installation steps are pretty simple. You just need to follow uh, the steps written on the link. <coughs> so before we uh, start our first topic, let me just show you what Krona look, looks like. So this is uh, what Krona editor, what the Krona SDK looks like. And this is what we will be using to create different games. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, go ahead and download it. Uh, now we will move towards covering a few uh, theoretical concepts and then I will quote them before you to give you a better understanding of what we are about to do. So the first topic is about display objects. Before moving forward, we should be clear about what display objects actually are. In a game on your mobile screen, you can see a lot of different objects. They could be uh, static images, it could be animations, uh, it could be a text object, it could be a shape like a circle or a rectangle or a triangle. All these fall in the category of display objects. So in this topic we will start with how to create a text object, then we will create different shapes like uh, a circle, a rectangle and we will draw lines as well. So let's start with this topic. Anything that appears on the screen is an instance of a display object. As I told you before, it could be a shape or it could be an image or it could be an animation. Display objects are easily created using different methods or functions from Krona's display library. Now in this slide you can see that there are, uh, I've listed down some of the display objects which we use in games frequently. First we have a text object. and Against it, I have written the method which is used to display it on the screen. We call the display library and in that display library, then we call the text. Display.new text means that we are telling the display library to display a new text on screen. Uh, we will go into more detail in a few minutes. Next we have rectangles, circles, images. Then we could make a dynamically selected image. And now, I'm sure you, you would be thinking what's the difference between an image and a dynamically selected image. Uh, once we reach that point, this will be explained in detail. Then we could, the next thing is animated sprites. Uh, as I said before, some images are static on your screen and some are in constant motion or there might be an animation. 
or an image with multiple frames that in, in the corona universe it is called an animated sprite and against it you can see that the function is display.new sprite so we will see how to uh, create animated sprites then we have display groups in some cases you may come across situations where different objects on your screen have same behavior have similar behavior and they uh, you want to couple them up so that with a few lines of code you can manipulate the behavior of all of those objects in that case we have to create different groups uh, we will see that in detail as well then we have lines and different polygons so starting with text objects let's go into more detail now so the method used is display dot new text what does this do it creates a text object on your screen now this text object has certain properties and it's important to understand those properties the local origin is at the center of the text this means that your text object whatever coordinates you have given it those coordinates will be centered at the center of the text the anchor point is initialized to this local origin we will see anchor points in more detail later on uh, the text is wrapped either at new lines or by specifying a width and height when the object is created this is a concept which you might be familiar with it's uh, used in uh, Microsoft Word for example we can wrap text according to our needs and we will see this as well in more detail by default the text color is white and the color can be changed using the method object colon set fill color and in this method the word object represents the object that we have created uh, it could have a different name it's a variable name and we can uh, give it any name that we wish uh, another thing that might need explaining is uh, the brackets that contain one one and one you must be familiar with the rgb color schemes corona uses that same color scheme in within these brackets you can pass a value from 0 to 1 or if you are using hexadecimal numbers then it could be from 0 to 255 in this case uh, it's using the 0 to 1 scheme and 111 means white 000 means black and anything in between will give you a certain color uh, we will play around with this too to see the effect it has so the syntax now the first line my text is equal to display dot new text and in the brackets we have passed options those who are familiar with computer programming might understand what this line is doing for others i i will explain it my text is the variable name it could be anything in this case i have kept it my text at the right side of the equal is the assignment statement in which we call the display library and we tell the display library to display a new text on screen after that there are brackets and in those brackets uh, you can see there is a single argument titled options this is an array which accept which accepts a set of parameters and over here it's important to mention that in uh, corona we will be using the terms array and table interchangeably the programming language used by corona is lua and in lua we uh, we call arrays as tables so now let's see what parameters are passed to this options array the first parameter is a parent this is an optional parameter uh, it's a group object it's the display group in which to insert the text object but in most cases we won't be inserting our text into group objects so for for starters we will be ignoring the parent parameter the next parameter is the text which we want to display on our screen uh, it's a string and it could be anything and it is written within inverted commas the next parameters are x and y coordinates uh, corona has a coordinate system of its own which i will be explaining in a few minutes um, this x and y represents the coordinates of our text this too is an optional parameter then we have width and height the width and height again is optional as well 
these are numbers which specify the width and height of our text and according to these parameters our text is wrapped. Then we have the next parameter is font. Um, we will be using the native dot system font. It's a string uh, and it could be any font which exists in your computer or you can download any font from the internet as well. This is a required part. This is a required parameter. The last parameter is font size again which is optional. Uh, just be careful not to put the font size as zero. Other than that any font size is acceptable. 